Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to look into IGCSE chapter 12, sound. And all sounds are caused by something vibrating. So it can be your phone ringing, or it can be a bell um, vibrating. And the reason we can hear sound today is because all the vibration that's generated, they travel through air particles all the way to our eardrums. And when our eardrums vibrate, this causes us to hear the sound that any object is making. So this is, these are the examples of how sound is produced. So when you hit a gong here, the gong will vibrate and that's what causes it sound. Similarly, um, your vocal fold, uh, I can actually feel the vocal fold of myself vibrating. And that's also how sound is created and then go into my, the microphone here. And an important note about sound is that it doesn't cause the air particles to move. It merely, the air particles are merely just a medium for it to move, for vibration to move. So I always use this example. So here I have some, um, just some water. Imagine that a duck is swimming from one part of the water to another. Just know that it is the duck that moves, but not the water. The water is just a medium which it travels. The same goes to sound. Sound, when they travel through air particles, the air particles doesn't move. It's just the vibration that is made by one object. And they are traveling from one place to another. Sound, air particles is just a medium. So here are how some of the musical instruments work to produce vibration. As for string instrument, we know that it is the string. When you pluck them, they will vibrate, and that's what causes the sound. And the air inside the instrument will also vibrate, which give, which is explain why each instrument will have its own distinctive sound, and why different instruments when they play this, when you play the same note, they can produce very different sound. And there is another instrument called a wind instrument. They basically work by um, the air part the vibration of the air particles. You can, for instance, um, you, in this instrument here, you can cover and uncover holes to change the length of the air column, and this will change the pitch of the note. And how does air travel? We know that air requires um, sound requires medium to travel, and this is an air particle views of how sound is being carried from one place all the way to another place. The source of the sound vibrate, and this makes the air particles around it to vibrate back and forth, like that, back and forth, in the direction the sound is traveling. Um, as we will learn in future chapters, this is actually called longitudinal waveform, but we'll talk about that more in the future videos. But I just wanted you to see um, this part of the graph here. A the first part is called compression. It is a region of sound wave when all the particles are being pushed together, whereas the other part is rarefaction. It's a region of sound wave where these particles are further apart from each other. And sound wave can travel through different mediums, like solid, when you knock the door, the sound is traveled from one part of the door to another part, liquid, and this is how dolphin or communicate with each other because their sound will travel through the liquid and also air particle which is what is happening right now so um that's like a, an experiment so this you can put a bell inside a bell jar and then turn on the machine to sort of absorb all the air particles out and what happened is that when the battery is connected the bell is ringing it can be seen vibrating and you can hear the sound but then vibration from the so how it works is that vibration from the bell pass through the air in the jar all the way to your ear. But let's say you were to use a pump to remove all the airs in the jar. So now the sound will not have a medium to travel. And as a result, you will see that the bell is still vibrating. But then the sound of it is no longer there because sound cannot travel and, and there's an absence of medium there. So this is an experiment that proved that sound requires a medium to travel. So let, now we have learned how sound is created, how they can travel. Let's look into the speed of sound. And as everything else, sound also requires time to travel from one place to another. This is why as after seeing a lightning strike, it often takes a few seconds before you can hear the light, the thunder clap. That's because the sound is traveling through the air all the way to your ears and it takes time. And these are the speed of sound in different mediums. In the air, it travels around 330 meters in one second. 
and the liquid is a lot faster. It travels around 1,500 meter in one second. And the solid is usually quicker than in liquid. But then for different types of solid, the speed of sound will also be different. So let's look into some work example to solve question. A kid here shout at the top of the mountain and hear the echo after 2.5 seconds. How far from the rock is he? Imagine that the sound travel all the way from one place to another and then reflect back. And in order to solve this problem here, we need to use a formula that we have learned in chapter two, which is called speed equal to distance over time. Because what we need to find is the distance. We have the time, we have the speed, and we can then plug everything in. I just make D the subject. The speed of sound, they ask us to assume that it's 340 and the time it takes is 2.5 seconds. So if you were to put that into calculator, you would get 8,500 meter. But then that's the distance that the sound travel. But the problem we're trying to solve here is how far is the boy from the rock? Therefore, you have to divide the result by two to get the distance, which will get 4,250 meter. So if I look into the next slide, Oops, I make a mistake here. Instead of um, 58500, it should be 850. And then the answer is 425 meter. So here it is. My bad, I don't have a calculator. Great, so next up, there's another example here. A spectator at a cricket match see the bad ball. So these are the spectator. See the bad man hit the ball. And then 1.2 seconds later, he hears the strike. How far is the spectator? So again, we can use the speed equal to distance over time. We can make distance the subject, speed times time. We can simply multiply 330 times 1.2, which will get um, 396 meter. And in this example, we don't divide it by two because the sound travel only one way from the Batman to the spectator. So the answer is 396 meter. If we look at it, this is the answer. So um, there's another work example. Sounds travel at 1,500 meters a second in fresh water, but it travels a little quicker, um, 30 meters per second quicker in salt water. Explain the difference in speed. We know that sound travels through the vibration of particles. And when you add salt into water, it will make the particle denser. And as a result, vibration can pass on um, quicker and more easily. And so therefore, the reason why sound travel faster in salt water is because it is a lot denser. Wait, so now let's look into how we can see sound. Even though it's invisible, scientists have invented some tools. So this, we have, here we have a cathode ray oscilloscope and microphone beside it. They can use to represent sound on a screen, meaning you can visualize the sound. And how it works is that microphone pick up the sound, convert it into electrical signals, and oscilloscope convert these signals into something like a graph thing that we can see. And how we can um, visualize it is by looking at how, first of all, the amplitude. And in this case here, the amplitude of sound here represent how loud the sound it is. So if my sound is very, very loud, you're gonna have a higher amplitude. So in the XY axis, the graph is gonna reach a, a peak of higher Y there. So, um, amplitude is the furthest distance the particles move from their undisturbed position. So the first thing we can see from an oscilloscope is the amplitude, how loud it is. The second thing is the frequency, meaning how frequent a graph is. We'll learn more about the properties of wave in chapter 14. But for now, just know that the frequency of a sound wave basically determines its pitch. The higher the frequency of a sound wave, the higher the pitch of the sound. So here I have a, another word example. Given that each grid represents 20 meters per second, calculate the frequency of the wave here. All right, so here's a formal definition of frequency. Frequency is the number of complete cycle like that in just one second. All right, so if we look back to the graph here, if in one second it creates more complete cycle means it has a high frequency. So how to determine the frequency? First, we need to determine how long does it take 
to create one cycle. And from the information, we know that one grid here represents 20 meter per second. And for the picture here, we can see that it takes two grids for one complete wave to pass through. And as a result, is 40 meter per second, meaning it takes 40 meter second, millisecond, sorry, not meter per second, 40 millisecond for one complete wave to travel. And therefore, to calculate how many complete waves it will travel in one second, I simply use one second, which is 1000 millisecond, divided by 40, and that will get 25, meaning in one second it will create 25 complete cycle. And as a result, we can say that the sound wave has a frequency of 25 hertz. So if we look at the answer here, so each grid represents 20 meter per sec millisecond, and one cycle will be 40, 40 millisecond. And in, for frequency, we just have to calculate number of waves produced in one second, in which we can use 1000 divided by 40, we'll get 25 hertz. So that's how you calculate frequency for if you have a reading on this oscilloscope. So now talk about hearing sound. Um, us young humans, we can hear sound from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And as we grow older, the sensory cells in the ear will deteriorate. So these cells can also be damaged by related to exposure to very loud music. So if you were to have your earphones on uh, with very high volume, you might da damage your eardrum. So um, what, if, what if the sound is more than 20,000 hertz? That means 20,000 cycle in one second. So these sound will be too high pitched to be heard. And we call sound that has greater than 20,000 hertz frequency ultrasound. And they can be heard by some animals like dolphins, which they use this high pitched sound to communicate. So um, besides um, all the ultrasound thing, we can also use, besides um, animals using ultrasound to communicate, we also use ultrasound for some of the application. So for example, sauna, it is a method used to determine the depth of water or to locate an underwater object. And how it works is that the ship will send a pulse down and from both, and then this ultrasound will be reflected up. And the time taken for the reflected pulse to re receive is measured. And because we know the speed of ultrasound, um, in water, we can calculate the depth of it using the distance formula. So let's try to solve one question. A ship sends out an ultrasound pulse and receives the echoes after 3 seconds. And the speed of sound is 1500. Calculate the depth. Um, we can use the formula speed equal to distance over time and make distance the subject to find out how mo what is the distance that the sound has traveled. And then I can use the speed of sound, 1,500, multiplied by time, which is 3. We got 4,500 meter. So this distance here will be how much the sound has traveled. But then since I want to calculate the depth of water, I only care about um, one way. So I'm going to divide what I have here by 2 to get my final answer here, which is 2,250 meter. So if you look at the answer, that's, that's how I solve it. And that's the first application of ultrasound used to determine the depth of the seabed. And the second application will be material testing here. So here I have a material here that, so this is the non crack region, and this is a crack region. And you can see that if the material is crack, once we emit an ultrasound to the object, it will be reflected a lot quicker as compared to a normal material here. So that's how ultrasound is used to detect flaw inside material. So a cracked metal will cause the ultrasound to be reflected earlier. And this allows engineers to know whether a material has been broken. Let's look into some possible question to before we end this video. Which of the frequency ranges is completely audible by a human? So we know that um, what the frequency of sound that we can hear is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So we just have to find, pick the answer which matches um, the range. 200 to 200K, we cannot listen to 200K, this is wrong. 5 hertz to 50,000, which is also wrong, because the most we can hear is 20,000. 50 hertz to 5K, 
and that would be correct. That would be the range we can hear. And if you look at number four, it'd be 50K, 50 million. So this is also not what we are looking for. So the answer is C. So next one, after a lockdown drill at a school, the management notes that the lockdown siren is too quiet. The pitch is too low. And they call the company to supply and ask them to make the alarm louder and to give a higher pitch. What effect does it change? Have to be changed. We know that if you want it to be louder, you have to increase the amplitude. If you want it to be um, higher, you have it to have higher pitch, you need to increase the frequency. So our correct answer here will be D. We'll pick it needs to have higher frequency and also high amplitude. And if you look into the answer, which is correct, which is donkey. So next up, so um, the diagram shows an ultrasound. So I'm going to skip this question here because it's related to what we will learn in chapter 14. But I'm, I just want you to see how the question is like so that when it becomes a chapter 14, you'll understand how to solve this question based on what we have learned so far. And that's the end of this chapter. And I hope you learn a lot about sound. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.